Last night was the Video Music Awards, the most important of all award ceremonies, because it is deeply important that we have award ceremonies that give awards to people who earn millions and millions of dollars for making crappy music that is popular. And I know, I know you're going to tell me that I'm an elitist in my taste. Right, because I like good things. And just because things are popular doesn't make them good. See the movie Titanic for an example. But the Avatar is an even better example. What is more telling about the VMAs than anything else is the amount of political posturing that happens at the VMAs. The reason the Democrats are having trouble in the middle of the country is because there's an elitist feel to the Democrats. The reason Donald Trump won is not because there are all these dispossessed people in the center of the country who felt economically left behind. The reason that Trump won is because Trump was a giant middle finger to a bunch of people in Hollywood and New York. That's really what Trump was. What Trump was was people getting sick of being told that they were racist, sexist, bigot, homophobes, and Trump responding by basically flipping everybody off and the Republican base cheering, yeah, because we were so sick of hearing over and over and over that we are terrible people. And that was it was sort of reinforced all throughout the 2016 campaign. For example, Hillary Clinton bringing out ads with Lena Dunham, who may have molested her sister, but she was supposed to be this great Hollywood moral icon who is going to tell us all about how we ought to think about issues like abortion. And the DNC, replete with all sorts of stars and, and people cutting versions of fight song with Elizabeth Banks and, and the stars of, of the Pitch Perfect movies. And everybody in the middle of the country went, really, that's your, your pitch to me in Ohio is Lady Gaga. That's your big pitch. Thanks for that. The VMAs are uh, another way for the Democratic left to reinforce just how out of touch they are. And what's funny is that the people who are actually in the business of politics know this. So Sherrod Brown is a senator from Ohio. Uh, he's a little bit more moderate than the typical Democrat, not much. Uh, he's got that wild hair over there. But he's the guy who's in touch with that blue collar base in Ohio, right? He has to be elected in the same state that Trump won by something like eight points. Well, Sherrod Brown was on TV yesterday on the MSNBCs, and he said that Democrats aren't really showing that they're fighting for the little guy. Well, I, I think Democrats have not talked enough about fighting for the little guy. I mean, it, it really our party. Are they too into life with too well, free trade? They're not. They're, you know, they're too. The party has been too free trade, but the Republicans have been more free trade. But that's our problem to show where we are and fight for workers. But I, I don't think the voters necessarily think what we should be thinking. And that is you fight for the little guy, whether she punches a clock, whether he works in a diner, whether she works construction, whether he works in manufacturing. So. Let's ask a question. Those people who are punching a clock, working in a diner, working in manufacturing, the people who are working on assembly lines or who are going to a factory in the evenings, do they really want to hear from a bunch of pampered celebrities who earn millions of dollars to read lines written by others or sing songs written by others or warble off-key songs that are then later auto-tuned for millions of dollars? Do they want to hear from those people about what America really constitutes? Is that really what's their cup of tea? The answer, of course, is no. And yet that's what Democrats continue to, to resonate to. The, the Democratic elite are wildly out of touch with all the people who are in the middle of the country, which is why they continue to cater to the folks over at the VMAs. So the VMAs, the Video Music Awards, it used to actually celebrate music of a sort. Now it's basically just a place for political posturing. Kevin Hart was hosting this thing with uh, Tiffany Haddish. Is that how it's pronounced? Uh, and, uh, and Kevin Hart, uh, he, he started off by joking about President Trump a lot, which is a brave thing. Well, my favorite part of this is that when Kevin Hart jokes about all this, what you'll hear is a triumphalism in his voice. Look at how brave I am. It's, it's very reminiscent of Robert De Niro at the Emmy Awards where he started shouting F you Trump and then raising his arms, raising his fist because he had single-handedly deposed the president of the United States under Article 32 of the Constitution of the United States. If an actor who once played a boxer shouts F you Trump at the president, he's no longer the president. So naturally, Robert De Niro was very enthusiastic about this. He got a standing ovation for shouting F you Trump. So going to virtue signal in front of a bunch of people who totally agree with you at Rockefeller Center in, in the middle of New York City or in Los Angeles, this is the height of courage in the, in the entertainment sphere. It's just like Normandy. It's like the guys who are coming off the boats and fighting the Nazis. That's Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish saying F you Trump. This makes them feel good inside. It makes them feel like they've done something virtuous and strong in a room full of people who agree with them and think that virtue and strength come from shouting at the president of the United States. Here's Kevin Hart joking about about Trump. Again, if you if you don't think this is off putting, then you're really not following how America works these days. I'm looking at this like it's game day, people. But do not worry, because at this game, you guys are allowed to kneel. You can do whatever the hell you want. There's no old white man that can stop you. Do it. I mean, beefs pop off, bad language. People run to the bathroom and send out crazy tweets. It's basically like your typical day at the White House. In your face, Trump, suck it. In your face, Trump, suck it. Well, first of all, funny would be good. Now, Kevin Hart used to be a comedian. Now he's just a short guy who yells at the president. 
And he's one of the few people in America that I'm allowed to call short because he's actually shorter than I am. But in any case, I, I'm going I'm to at least take a moment to enjoy that. But Kevin Hart, yeah, doing this routine at the Video Music Awards broadcast across the nation, watched by seven people, but treasured by the celebrity culture in the Democratic Party. Is that sort of thing going to hurt Trump or is it going to help Trump? The answer, of course, is it's radically going to help Trump. Every time people in the culture decide to insert themselves into politics, everyone else gets really, really annoyed. But it wasn't just that. And there was somebody named Logic. I assume that was his given name. I assume he came out of his mother and his mother said, well, I shall call you Logic. But apparently he's some sort of rapper. Don't know. Don't really care. And he did some song called One Day. He ran out while doing this song wearing a shirt that said F the wall. And then he brought out a bunch of kids who are either illegal immigrants or children of activists. And they're all wearing shirts that say, we are all human beings. Right. Okay, but some of you are here illegally. Like, I'm confused. There are lots of different types of human beings all over planet Earth and in the United States as well. That does not answer the question. I mean, you could go to prison and say, and have everybody wear shirts saying we are all human beings. Like, there are lots of types of human beings. That's not even to say these kids are bad. But again, the virtue signaling in the room is really strong. Also, F the wall. I just wonder whether Mr. Logic actually has a wall around his house. I assume he lives in some sort of gated community. He has security. It's very easy to pick on celebrities this way because they live in a world that they don't actually inhabit. There's a great book by Charles Murray called Coming Apart. And what the book is really about is all of these people who are these kind of white upper crust elites who live on the coasts and they push a message of social liberalism. They push that single motherhood is totally wonderful and they push that abortion is totally cool and they push that not saving your money is fine. And they push all of these socially liberal messages about big government and high taxes. And then they take all their money and they store it in offshore bank accounts and they get married and they have kids just like a normal family in 1955. But everybody in the middle of the country who listens to them follows this advice and then they live crappy lives. Well, that's exactly what happens when you see these celebrities talking about F the wall. You think these people are going to be affected by the lack of a wall on the southern border? They're not ranchers in Arizona. Okay, These folks are not going to be affected by this. All that a lack of a wall means to these folks is that they have cheaper illegal immigrant labor to do their lawns. Legitimately, that's what celebrities in L.A. do. Most of the time, celebrities who are interacting with illegal immigrants are doing so in terms of household service. Seriously, I live in L.A. I promise you, I know a lot of these celebrities. And most of them, when they talk about illegal immigrants, they're talking about that. They want a cheap housekeeper or a cheap nanny. Now, listen, I, I don't blame any of the people who are coming across the border to live a better life in the United States. I do blame a system that allows people to cross the border illegally without checking them. It seems to me that the least a country can do is check the folks coming across the border to make sure that, number one, they are safe, number two, they are educated, and number three, they're going to contribute to society and not mooch off of society. But these folks, it doesn't affect them. It doesn't matter to them. They don't live in poorer neighborhoods where culture changes when thousands of people come across the border and they don't speak the native tongue and they bring customs from home. Right? That, that doesn't actually make any difference to people who are living in gated uh, communities and gated establishments. It doesn't make any difference to them because they are gated off from everyone else. And the only actual contact they have with illegal immigration doesn't involve any additional crime. It doesn't involve any sort of additional poverty that exists in certain communities in the United States thanks to illegal immigration. It doesn't actually change any of that for them. So it's easy for them to go up there and virtue signal in front of all of their rich friends. Here was the aforementioned logic. Again, I'm, I'm so confused by rapper names, I can't even express it. Uh, but here, here is Logic performing one day in a wall that reads F the in a shirt that reads F the wall. I really have to admit, it's almost impossible not to watch this particular number and just get flashes to pop star with Andy Samberg. Because it legitimately is one guy singing like, uh, like who is it, George Michael? in it, it with George Michael singing and then some guy rapping about social justice in the background. It's really, it's really incredible. So if you, if you haven't seen that movie, you should go check it out. It's very obscene, but it's really, really funny. But that's what all of this stuff is. And it is inherently absurd. It's inherently absurd. They didn't just do that. They also cut a TV promo to get out the vote, which is really exciting. They had all of these celebrities who cut a TV promo trying to tell everybody it's important to rock the vote because this is what we need is celebrities telling people to vote. I would prefer, frankly, that fewer uninformed people vote rather than everybody who watches the VMAs voting. Also, if people are voting because a celebrity told you to, then you probably shouldn't be voting in the first place. The final word on this comes courtesy of Michael Avenatti, who legitimately showed up at the VMA. The best part of this, and you know, when I say that the Democrats and the VMAs are basically one thing, that the celebrity culture of the Democratic Party has basically eaten the Democratic Party, I don't mean that apocryphally. I, I don't mean that in any sort of vague sense. 
Barack Obama is sort of the celebrity to the celebrity culture. And the, the mutual back scratching of celebrity that went on during the Obama administration was pretty incredible. Everybody in Hollywood thought Barack Obama was a celebrity. And Barack Obama wanted to hang out with the celebrities who thought that he was a celebrity. So the merger of celebrity and politics was already in place long before we elected a reality television star to the presidency of the United States. Barack Obama was actually the first reality TV star to be president of the United States. He had no real political experience. He came out of nowhere. TV glorified him. And he was considered a celebrity more than he was a politician, even before he was elected president of the United States. In any case, what this leads to is the actual merger of reality TV and politics, which is, I have to admit, deeply entertaining. So Michael Avenatti, you will remember, is the lawyer for Stormy Daniels. He became famous literally by representing a porn star who once shook the president. This is his legitimate claim to fame. The only reason he is famous is because Stormy Daniels during Shark Week nailed the president and then went away for many years because the president paid her lots of money to go away. And then in an act of brazen bravery, decided to come out and tell her important story. She doesn't allege the president actually abused her in any way, right? She just wanted to come out and make some money off of this thing so she could strip for higher rates. But Michael Avenatti is her lawyer and he's been out there saying that he is going to tear down the president. He's the lawyer who's finally going to bring down the president of the United States. And he shows up at the VMAs. Now, everybody's sort of laughing at this. I think Michael Avenatti has a shot at the 2020 nomination. I do. I'll explain why after you watch Michael Avenatti talk about why he's at the Video Music Awards. What the heck are you doing here? Well, you know, I was invited to this great event. It's a pretty cool event, and uh, I thought I'd show up. So were you surprised to be invited? A uh, little bit, a little bit, but, you know, hopefully it won't be the first time. Uh, well, it is the first time. Hopefully it won't be the last time. So. so are you really considering a run for president? I am. I'm serious about it. I'm seriously looking at it. I'm traveling around, talking to people in the country. And, you know, I've been really surprised at how much enthusiasm there is out there for the potential. So I'm going to make a decision. I want to be smart about it, deliberate it. You know why? Because the VMAs is a, is a signifier of Democratic id. If you want to know what Democrats feel, all you have to do is really watch the VMAs. You want to know what Democrats think? You have to look at their various policy proposals and you have to talk to the Democrat Socialists of America and all the rest. If you want to know what they feel, watch the VMAs. And that is a visceral hatred for the president of the United States. And Michael Avenatti represents that in a pretty solid way. His entire claim to fame is yelling at Trump. And so now he's at the VMAs yelling at Trump. And people look at him, they go, I like that guy. You know why? Because he yells at Trump. That's awesome. If the Democrats disappoint in 2018, if they don't take back Congress in 2018, for example, you could see such a strong backlash, so much anger, that somebody like Avenatti could actually win some primaries based solely on, I'm the only guy in this room who's actually sued the president of the United States. I'm the only guy in this room who's willing to say basta. I'm the only one in this room who's aggressive enough to take on the president. That has some appeal to Democrats because the VMAs represent the id, Michael Avenatti is the id, and the Democrats have basically decided to cave to their id as opposed to following the sort of blue collar tactics that, that Sherrod Brown would prefer. 